Hi friends, Allie here. This week I'll be sharing tutorials for these three Country Cottage Minis. On Monday I shared the Mini Country Cottage Stocking. I'll put a link to that down below if you want to check it out. Today we'll be making the Mini Country Cottage Mitten. And on Friday I'll post the Mini Country Cottage Beanie. If you're not familiar, I have regular size versions of all these patterns, but I thought it would be fun to make mini versions for the holidays. You can use them as tree ornaments, gift card holders, put little treats in them, or attach them to gifts. So today we'll be making the mini country cottage mitten. I'll show you how to make it two-tone. So we have one color for the main body and thumb, and then another color for the cuff, but feel free to use any color combinations that you'd like. This measures approximately four inches by 2.5 inches, so a gift card can perfectly fit inside, or you can even add a hanging loop so it can be hung on the tree. Before we get started, if you wanna follow along with the free written pattern, you can find it on my website, theturtletrunk.com, and as the other mini tutorials are published, I will link them down below. If you want the ad-free printable PDF, which includes all three of these mini patterns, you can find it in my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. So if you're ready to get started, let's head over to our supply list and let's get making. For today's tutorial, you'll need medium four weight yarn in two colors. I'll be using Red Heart Super Saver. For color A, which is the main body color, you'll need about 25 yards. And then color B, for the cuff, you'll need about three yards. You'll also need a five millimeter or H crochet hook, scissors, and a yarn needle. Starting with our color A yarn, we're going to begin by making a magic circle. So take the tail end of your yarn and wrap it around your pointer finger and your middle finger. When you bring it around a second time, cross it over and bring it to the back of your hand. Take your crochet hook, insert it under the first loop and grab the second loop. Pull it up and then we're going to secure that with a chain one. So there we have our magic circle. And for round one, we're gonna work eight half double crochets inside the circle. So yarn over, insert your hook into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. So we're gonna work a total of eight half double crochets inside the circle for round one. After working all eight of your half double crochets, we're gonna take the tail end of our yarn and pull it tight to close up the hole in the center there. And then we're going to join to the top of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And then chain one. For round two, we're gonna work two half double crochets into each stitch around. So starting in the same stitch that we just joined to, we're gonna work two half double crochets into each stitch around for round two. At the end of round two, you should have a total of 16 stitches around. Now we're gonna to join to the top of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And we're gonna chain two. Now for round three, we are gonna work one double crochet into each stitch around. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So we're just gonna work one double crochet into each stitch around for round three. At the end of round three, our stitch count is still at 16. We're gonna join and chain two. Now we're on to round four. For round four, we are gonna work one double crochet into the first stitch. So the same stitch we are joined to. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna work a front post double crochet. So that's a double crochet worked around the post of the stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook beside the post of the stitch, around the back and back to the front. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. So there we worked a front post double crochet. So now we're just gonna alternate those two stitches all the way around. So double crochet into the next stitch. Then front post double crochet around the next stitch. So yarn over and insert your hook beside the post of the stitch. Around the back, back to the front, 
yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So for round four, we're just gonna repeat those two stitches all the way around, double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch. I'm just coming up to the end of round four. So our last stitch will be a front post double crochet. Then we're gonna join to the top of the first double crochet and chain two. So you can see that texture starting to show up on our mitten. Now for round five, we're gonna work the same two stitches, but we're gonna do the opposite. So we're gonna start with a front post double crochet. So around the double crochet from the previous round, we are gonna work a front post double crochet and then in the next stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet. So on top of the front post double crochet from the previous round. So we're just gonna alternate those two stitches again, front post double crochet into the next stitch, then double crochet in the next stitch. So you're always gonna be working a front post double crochet into the double crochet from the previous round, and then work your double crochet into the front post double crochet from the previous round. So for round five, we're just gonna repeat front post double crochet, then double crochet all the way around. At the end of round five, your last stitch will be a double crochet. Then we're gonna to join to the top of the first front post double crochet with a slip stitch and chain two. Now we're on to round six, and for round six, we're just gonna repeat what we did for round four. So we are going to work one double crochet into the first stitch. And then a front post double crochet into the next stitch. And we're just gonna repeat that all the way around for round six, double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch. Our last stitch of round six is going to be a front post double crochet. Then we're gonna to join to the top of the first double crochet with a slip stitch and chain two. At the end of round six, our stitch count is still 16. So we are gonna work one more round, but at the end of this round, we are going to make our thumb hole. So we are going to repeat what we did for round five. We're going to front post double crochet into the first stitch, then double crochet into the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around until two stitches remain. So I'm gonna start off the round working a front post double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat that around until two stitches remain and then I'll catch back up with you when we reach the last two stitches. So I only have two stitches left at the end of round seven. So we're gonna skip those two stitches. So we're gonna chain two and join to the top of the first stitch of the round. So we're gonna skip those last two stitches, join and chain two. So there we have a hole. That's where we're gonna put the thumb for our mitten and we're gonna do that very last. So we're just gonna continue on with the round. So for round eight, we are gonna work one double crochet into the first stitch, then front post double crochet into the next stitch. And we're just gonna repeat that around for round eight. So double crochet into the next stitch, then front post double crochet into the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around until we get to those last two chains. So I'm just on the last front post double crochet of round eight, and then we have the two chains left at the end. So we're gonna work two double crochets into those chains. So one double crochet into the first chain, and then one double crochet into the second chain. And in the second chain, we're gonna stop before the last pull through. I pull through here, but then I realized I made a mistake. We're not gonna do that final pull through. We are gonna change colors here. So this is gonna be the color for our cuff. So I'm gonna drop my color A yarn and pick up my color B yarn. And I'm just gonna finish that final pull through with color B. And then you can join to the first stitch of the round with color B. 
and then we're onto the cuff. We're gonna come back and do the thumb at the end. So now we're gonna be doing the cuff with our color B yarn. So you can cut off your color A yarn and weave in your ends. We'll be using that again for our thumb, so don't put it too far away. I'm just gonna tie the tail ends of my yarn together here so they don't come undone. And then if you wanna weave them in now, you can, or you can weave them in at the end. Now we're onto the cuff. We're gonna begin by chaining four. Then for row one, we are gonna single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Then single crochet into the next two chains. And now working into the last round of our mitten, we're gonna skip the stitch that we're currently attached to and then we're gonna slip stitch into the next two stitches. So in the next two stitches from round eight. Then we're gonna turn, and for row two, we're gonna single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch up. So the loop closest to us on a stitch is the front loop, and the one furthest away is the back loop. So working in the back loop only, single crochet into each stitch up for row two. At the end of the row, we're gonna chain one and turn. And now for row three, we're gonna single crochet in the back loop only all the way down the cuff. So in the next three stitches, single crochet in the back loop only then when you reach the bottom, we're gonna slip stitch into the next two stitches from round eight. And turn. And then we're just going to keep repeating rows two and three all the way around for the cuff. So going up the cuff, you are going to single crochet in the back loop only, chain one and turn. And then going down the cuff, you're gonna single crochet in the back loop only, all the way down, and then slip stitch into the next two stitches from round eight. So I'm just gonna continue repeating rows two and three all the way around the cuff, so I'll catch back up with you when we reach the end of the cuff. So I'm just on row 15 of the cuff, so I'm coming down to the bottom of the cuff and there should be one stitch left from round eight. So I'm gonna slip stitch into that last stitch and now we're just going to attach the two ends of the cuff together. So I'm gonna slip stitch working into the foundation chain from the beginning and then also the last row we worked for the cuff. And I'm gonna be working in the front loop only from that last row, just to make the join a little less bulky, but feel free to work into both loops if you'd like. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the foundation chain first, and then into the first stitch of the cuff, and then we're just going to slip stitch those together. And we're gonna repeat that across So there you can see our nice join, and then we can cut off our color B yarn. Then you can weave in that end, and then we will grab our color A yarn again and continue on with the thumb. So now we are going to add a thumb to our mitten. So if you want to grab your color A yarn again, I'm just gonna make a slip knot on my hook and then I'm gonna attach it to the thumb hole. So as you can see, if you're looking at your mitten like this, we have two stitches on the bottom there. So attach your yarn to one of those two stitches.
and chain two. I'm just gonna hide my end inside the mitten. So we're gonna work two rounds for our thumb. So we're gonna work a total of six double crochets around for the first round. So working into the same stitch that we attached to, we're gonna double crochet, and then on the side of the next stitch, two at the top, one on the other side, and then one on the other one on the bottom. So we're gonna work a total of six double crochets around the hole. This one is just gonna be worked into the side of the stitch. You wanna make sure that you're grabbing two loops of yarn and then working at the top of the hole, we're gonna double crochet two times. And then continuing to turn on the side of that stitch, we're going to double crochet. And then we need one more in the bottom Then we're gonna to join to the top of the first double crochet we worked of the round. And chain two. Then for round two, we are gonna work a double crochet into the first stitch. Then we're gonna front post double crochet around the next stitch, and we're just gonna repeat those two stitches around. Double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch. Then we're gonna to join to the top of the first stitch with a slip stitch. And then we're gonna tie off our yarn, leaving about a six inch long tail. I'm just gonna pull that out with my hook and then grab my yarn needle. And we're just going to weave that tail end through the last six stitches of the thumb, and that's just gonna close up the hole. So working in those last six stitches of the thumb, weave your yarn around, and then pull it tight to cinch up the hole at the top there. Then I'm just going to secure that with a few knots and then you can weave in that end and cut off any excess yarn. And here is our mini mitten, so you can leave it as is if you'd like, or I'll show you now how to add a hanging loop. So you just need to grab whatever color yarn you'd like for your loop, and then we're gonna attach it inside between the last round and the cuff. And I'm just gonna put mine up the side, so on the opposite side of where the thumb is. Just try and get it centered in the side. And then attach your yarn. And then you can make this as long or as short as you want. I'm going to chain 15, and this is gonna create a hanging loop that is about two inches long. So feel free to adjust. You can chain as many or as few as you'd like to get whatever length you want. But I'm gonna chain 15, and then I'm gonna join back to where I attached the yarn. Then you can tie off your yarn, 
leaving a long enough tail that you can weave it in. I'm just going to tuck mine on the inside for now, I'll weave them in after. And there we have our mini country cottage mitten with a little hanging loop. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the other Country Cottage minis and the original versions of these patterns as well. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you're notified as soon as a new video is up. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.